In the last video, we learned about maybe, which allowed us to say sometimes we don't have a value that makes sense to return from this function. Um, and in this video, we're going to learn about the result type, which is just like maybe, except it's also going to let us specify what went wrong um, and provide that uh, error as a value that our users uh, or uh, other people calling our function uh, can work with. So let's take a look uh, at what that, what that might look like with a practical example. So um, I'm going to make a new module here called email.elm. And the motivation for email is that um, we've been getting, you know, in my fictional company, what is it, fruits.com, <laughs> in my fictional company, we've been getting bug reports that people are just entering their email as, you know, X, Y, Z. Uh, and it's just, they're just trying to fill out the form and um, I don't know, spam us or something. I don't know what these kids are doing with it. They're, they're nuts. Uh, so what uh, I'm trying to do with this email type is make it so that it's not possible uh, to make it email um, unless it contains uh, the at sign followed by some by some text. So uh, let's take a look at at what that um, what that might look like. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a custom type called email uh, that's going to hold onto a string uh, internally. And instead of exposing uh, a way to make it, instead of exposing email and uh, the email variant. I'm not going to expose that at all, and I'm only going to expose a from string method and a to string method. So people that use this module are going to be able to use the email type in their annotations. They're going to be able to create an email from a string, uh, and then they're going to be able to um, uh, turn an email back into a string, maybe if they want to show it on the screen or something like that. Uh, so what uh, I'm going to use for from string is I'm going to start by using that maybe type that we saw in the last video. So because not every uh, the string value should return a valid email, um, we want to use maybe uh, for the return type. So this is going to be raw you know, text input that comes from our user. And we don't know what this is. This could be one, two, three. This could be Ryan at elm.land. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to say if string.contains an at sign. This is going to be our really simple email validation. If this contains an at sign, then that's okay. We will return an email uh, that has whatever that raw text input is. But in the situation where uh, it doesn't contain that, we want to return nothing. Um, so that's how we can implement the from string function. Let's implement to string really quick uh, just so that we can uh, get that out of the way. This takes an email. And when we're going from an email to a string, that's always going to work because it's always going to have it. It'll already be validated. This should work every time. So there's no need for a maybe for our two string function. So what we can do is say, uh, we can either do case email of email, and then this is the raw text. Uh, and just we can return that raw text. Uh, this is a kind of a little bit more verbose of a way uh, to write this. If you have a custom type that only has one variant, Here's a pro tip for you. You don't have to do a case expression. Uh, there's actually some syntax sugar in Elm to let you just extract the value out in line, just like that. So this is totally equivalent uh, to this. Um, so just keep that in mind. I'm gonna leave it like this, um, just so that you can kind of understand what we're doing is we are taking that email value, we are pattern matching on it, and that's how we can get that string out. Uh, but you can, you can really just uh, put this directly in here. I'll leave it like this just for you, just for you guys. All right, so these are our functions. And this module, uh, this module works. So if I want to get an email to be uh, you know, a maybe email, what I'll have to do is I'll have to import that email module. I'll expose the email type so that I can use it right here. Um, if I don't expose it, I won't, I'll have to do like email.email, which will be a big, big weird looking thing and everyone will laugh at me on the internet. So we're going to expose that type. And then because I didn't expose from string, I'm going to have to do email dot from string one, two, three. So here, if I ran this, uh, let's, let's open this up in, um, REPL import email. Oops. Uh, is this even in the right? Oh, this isn't even in the right folder. So code, what are we at? Elm modules. I don't even know where my stuff is. 
yeah, you can access the documents folder. It's a real fresh install. All right, let's run the Elm REPL here and let's import uh, uh, that main function. Let's just import email too. Exposing email. So if we did, uh, if we go back to what we had here, we had main.email. And we'll see that that is giving us a nothing, right? Uh, so this is the maybe type that we saw before uh, because we have a one, two, three. And if we use the email module um, and we call email dot from string directly, we can see what values seem to work. Brian at elm.land. Looks like that works and we get our email back. Um, but if we said email dot from string and we just said X, Y, Z, uh, we're getting nothing. So if we have an email value, the only way to create it uh, outside this module, the only way to create it is from string. So uh, we can know that every single email in our application or every single data structure, like this user data type, um, if it uses the email type, it has to be a, a string that contains the at sign. There's no getting around it. Um, so what I wanna show you in this video is uh, we can use the result type to provide a little bit more information to our users. So rather than returning a maybe, uh, we can use result and say, um, uh, we're either going to give you a problem as a string value is like what went wrong as text, or if it works, we're going to give you that email you're looking for. And all the changes in our function is uh, we use the okay constructor to create a result. And rather than returning nothing, we use this ERR error constructor. And we can say, you know, must contain an at sign an at character. So now that I save this, I'm you know getting an error over here uh, for no reason. Yeah, I'm getting an error over here <laughs> because I said that it's returning a maybe when really it's returning this result. Um, so that's, that's what that error is about. But if we come back in here and we re-import email, so let's just, uh, let's see what we had before. Uh, now, um, when we give it a valid email, it's okay, and here's our email. Uh, but if we give it an invalid email, it's gonna give us exactly what went wrong. Um, so we can do all sorts of stuff. Our email function can you know, be more uh, complicated or you know, as simple as we want. And we can say you know, there's more uh, things, you know, like string dot contains dot, for example. Raw text put. So we can say, uh, if it doesn't contain a dot, it doesn't contain this. We can say, you gotta have that, gotta have this. Otherwise it's gonna work. So we can say, if it doesn't have an at sign, we say that must contain a, you know, a period character. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's okay. You passed both the validation steps and it's gonna work. So if I say email dot from string Ryan dot Elmland, that seems to work. If I do Ryan at Elm, we're gonna get this error. And if I just do Ryan, we're gonna get that error. And so result is gonna allow us to uh, provide more information uh, from our function, uh, saying exactly what went wrong without the user having to look at the code and see exactly you know, what's going on. They can just get that value. Um, and the reason that the string is a parameter is because you can even define your own problem type. So uh, I'm gonna make my own problem type and I'm gonna expose all the options here. Um, so if you want to you know, print this out in English or print this out as like a Spanish error message, you know, depending on if your app's language, you can use a problem type and say you know, missing uh, at, um, or you can say you know, at sign missing dot. Um, what you can do is you can say, this is a result that returns a problem or an email. Um, and in that case, you can do this. And the value that comes back is not going to be a string anymore. Oops, did I copy that? I meant to copy this. Uh, but you can have custom error types, and then you can have something, uh, some other system that helps you render those. So I'm just going to comment this out here because uh, we don't need this. Uh, but the important thing is now when I do this, 
uh, we are getting our own custom type value and we can use the case expression to ensure that we handle every single possible outcome uh, for that and turn it into text, turn it into English, Spanish, French, uh, whatever you're into. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is that um, there are uh, there's also a map function for result. So when we were looking at maybe.map, we were able to say string that two int one, two, three, right? That gave us a maybe. And then we did maybe.map and we defined a function called double uh, before. Let's define that again, where double doubles a number. Um, so this doubled, you know, one, two, three, which made it four, five, six. We can also double 100, make it 200. Uh, result has the exact same thing. So uh, if you have a maybe and you wrap it in that just keyword, oops. <laughs> If you have an actual integer that's valid and you double it, that works. Um, result works the exact same way. Uh, so you can say OK, and then rather than using maybe.map, you can use result.map. And it's going to do the exact same thing. So if you want to uh, you know, change the value inside of a result, you can use result.map. If you want to change the value inside of a maybe, use maybe.map. And the same thing works with the list, right? So if I want to do 100, 200, you know, let's just do 100 to be simple. This is this general pattern that we're going to see happen over and over again. This map function just works on the stuff inside these, these kind of container data structures. Um, so uh, that works great for a result. If you're trying to map something that um, is an error, uh, the map is not going to change the error type. It's only going to change the OK type. Uh, but there is a different function that we can use map error. And what this is going to do is this is going to take whatever error message you have, and it is going to run it through the string dot length function. So it's going to turn problem into the number uh, seven, and it's going to keep it inside that error state. So if you have a problem and you want to add more information to it, uh, you can use map error, and that's going to work on kind of like this, this first uh, variable rather than the second uh, inside variable. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, that's the result type. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at some of the collection data structures and help you decide uh, which ones you should use um, depending on what kind of uh, thing you're building.